I say that. Okay. Here we go. Hey, welcome to Stuck in Beta, and you just took a drink of something that didn't look yeah, very that, good. You know, this beer I'm drinking, I'm sorry, this is Josh, who are you? I'm Greg. Um, th- I'm drinking this vanilla cream ale. That's been in the fridge for about two years, by the way. Has it really? It, it's <laughs> it's not bitter, but it's definitely got a wang to it. And it's, I'll drink it because it's beer, but man. Anyway, <laughs> where's... Uh, Where's OJ? Where's our other Josh at? O- OJ is he's he's at a basketball game for his uh, son. Priorities, huh? Yeah, you know. So we've he, got a Christmas tree filling in for him. Yeah, we well, should. we've been we've had that up for a while. But yeah, we've had it up for a couple of weeks. Wouldn't know from last week's episode. Well, okay, so <laughs> I don't have last week's episode up yet, and if you're listening, it's been a week. It's been a week, and I'm sorry. I'll, I'll rectify that Rec- later. You said rectum. I didn't. It's it, December is busy. December is busy. December you got that is right. Very man. busy. Yes, I agree with you there. So since Josh is out, we have called up a uh, team player from the minor league. I think we got uh, loyal listener Mike. We're gonna call him here. In a, are you gonna? You want it? me to call? Him? Go ahead and call him. He's okay. he's expecting our call. Let's see. I think it's calling now. Huh? It's ringing. Hopefully he can hear us. That's it's worked every other time. I don't okay. know why it wouldn't work this time. Turn this down a little. Hopefully he answers the phone. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited. This is like you guys are always the highlight of my Wednesday. <laughs> See? So I'm so I'm I'm super happy to be here. You, we well, do awesome. we do we rank above your buddy George R R Mutt R R. R. Martin? I'm sorry, I can barely hear you. Could you? Uh, yeah. Do we do we rank over our, your buddy uh, George R. R. Martin? Oh, you you guys are like ten steps above George R. R. Martin. Wow, and we don't even if have boobs. Put, if on. he put out if he put out a St. Louis beer themed podcast, maybe we maybe. don't e- we don't even have no, boobs can, on this what? show. Yeah. You don't have what on this show? Boobs. boobs? Yeah, you know George. Is- you, you did- Listeners just have to use their imagination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not HBO. <laughs> yeah. So you're you're calling us from the or we called you. We uh, you're you're in the land of enchantment, right? I'm in the land of enchantment in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yeah. How's the weather out there? Oh, it's beautiful today. It's uh, 60 degrees and sunny. That's how it is every day in the winter, though. Really. Yeah, how is it out there? It's colder than hell. Yeah, it's like twenty eight degrees. <laughs> it was like what? It, wasn't that like seven this morning? I don't know. If it was that cold? It was damn. Maybe the wind shifted. It was pretty damn cold this morning. It's miserable. Yeah, it's uh, fun I'm, times. I'm here. not jealous. So, all right, we'll uh, we'll carry on with the show, Mike. You chime in whenever you feel like it, and we're gonna. I think we're gonna have a whole getting to know Mike segment. We need like getting to know oh, music the- or something. So. Oh, this is exciting! I'm wondering. It's gonna be if, like my my Tinder profile. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm wondering if your mic if is my mic my mic. No, your mic. He he's probably hearing you through the mic on this laptop. Oh, what the heck is that? What? Hold on, we're getting feedback. Are we? Mike, turn. Can you mute YouTube, Mike? What's that? My every I got everything muted. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Do you want me to wait? Do you want me to mute me? Do you want me to mute my phone till I start talking? No. No, I don't think that's the okay. problem. We're having uh, Greg's checking all of our wires here. I gotcha. All of a sudden, I get a weird squeal. You don't I hear that? No, I don't hear anything. Oh, maybe no, I don't it's hear my... anything either. Oh, it stopped. Okay, I don't know what it was. It's your, your dog hearing. I, yeah, I think your, it was my headphones. Your canine hearing. All right. Anyway, uh, I guess. Well. We'll get to what we were going to yeah. talk about. We need to talk about Star Wars, too. Is that on the agenda? Well, uh, this week we actually... No, not Star Wars, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, there is a lot of comic news this week. Are you talking like ha-ha funny comic or comic book? Like comic books, superheroes and all that. Okay. 
Uh, first, uh, last week, I guess, last Thursday or Friday, the new Spider-Man Homecoming trailer came out. And I just, you made me yeah, watch it I made just you five watch minutes it, yeah. ago. Yeah. Have, have you watched that, Mike? I haven't watched that. Oh, yet, come no. on. Now, uh, we should have warned him ahead of time. I should have warned and you. Show prep, Mike. Come on, Jesus. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> the, the cool thing about this, uh, trailer, you see that, uh, Tony Stark, you know, um, Iron Man. Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. He is he seems to look like he's he's gonna be a mentor of Peter Parker. <clears throat> he's gonna be in pretty much the I mean, he's throughout the whole trailer, so it doesn't look like just a cameo. Yeah, I agree. I think he plays a pretty important role. And at the end of the trailer you see him in the Iron Man suit right next to Spider Man. So for a Sony move Sony movie, which is Produced by Marvel, which is now in the Marvel universe. You you lost me. Well, okay, so it all matches up with the Disney movies. Oh, now. okay, I got gotcha. you. All right, I got gotcha. you. I know what you're saying now. And so, but Sony had to have flipped the bill to pay Robert Downey Jr. I mean, well, sure, and probably some rights money to Disney to have the Iron Man character, don't you think? I. Well, I think that became an agreement for them to use Spider-Man in um, oh, I Civil get you. War movie. Civil War, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mike, are you a big comic book movie fan? You know, I, I, skip, I skip around. If one looks interesting, I'll go see it. But um, it seems like the Marvel Universe, they're getting so complicated now. Like, uh, I missed the second Captain America, but I went and saw the third and I missed the second Avengers, and I was completely lost. I didn't know what the hell I was watching. Yeah, the th I could see the third Captain America being really confusing if you didn't watch Winter Soldier. Yeah, Civil War. Yeah. yeah. It, and it, but it's a great movie. It's a good movie. It's a great movie. But you could really call that Avengers 3. Yeah. Because it's got everybody in it. In it. Yeah. You know? Plus Ant-Man, plus Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it didn't have the Hulk, did it? No. Because oh, the Hulk's the best. The end of the second Avengers, Hulk. Well, Thor isn't in, in it either. Right. And apparently, the new Thor movie that comes out next, I guess that's next year or maybe the year after, is going to be a Thor and Hulk team up movie, like a buddy. Movie. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Which huh, that'll, that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, it sounds like a fun movie. I wonder if Natalie Portman will be in it. I think she's done. Really? With, yeah, I don't think she's doing any more. Huh. Because she did both both Thor movies, right? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, it's just a girlfriend. What, you know. <laughs> Trade them like underwear, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Not you know. now that you're engaged, obviously. But. Well, no, yeah. But, uh, so, there was Spider-Man. There was that as far as... There is... They announced... Uh, well, they did a long time ago. There's a new series on NBC coming in February uh, called Powerless. And it's about a... So basically, after the big superheroes destroy the city or whatever, they come in and they're... They like... It was supposed to be like an insurance company. They would come and assess damages and find out how much it would cost. You know, they have no powers. But now they are... They just announced that they'll be working for Wayne's Wayne's I can't talk Wayne Securities, which is a subsidiary of Wayne Enterprises. Really? Yeah. And they'll be like providing, I guess, weapons to make it safe for people to, that don't have powers. I don't know. To let, huh? Interesting. That's kind of a far reach for NBC. But it's a comedy too. Really? So. It's got that'll be interesting. The dude, uh, um, uh, Hudgens, uh, Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah, and uh, Mike, do you remember Vanessa Hudgens? What are you talking to me? Yeah, <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens. What is she? What is she on? I I know the name. It rings a bell. She was wasn't she? The, she was a Disney Channel. She was girl the Disney Channel girl that took a selfie topless back when oh. selfies first oh, started. Okay. I was about to look her up, but I'm on my work computer now. That would be really bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, don't do that. 
But and uh, it's got uh, the guy who played Abed from I don't know his real name from Community. Oh yeah, yeah. I like Community. Yeah, but that that's going to be an interesting show for NBC because they haven't really ventured out into that superhero realm, no. have they? No, they haven't. I mean, ABC and and. And well, the AB- CD- CW have kind of owned that for a while now, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, you think about it, ABC. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gus. The camera just got moved by Gus. <laughs> and the dogs are barking like yeah. crazy. Probably another delivery from Target. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh. NBC so, yeah, and, superheroes. Yeah, NBC hasn't really branched out into superheroes just... The CW has like all the DC. Uh, obviously, ABC has all the Marvel because it's owned by Disney. Right, and they have Agents of Shield. And, yeah, yeah. But it'll be, and those shows seem to have a pretty decent following. You know, they, they I was, I don't know, Agents of Shield hasn't gotten canceled, and the Flash keeps coming back, and the, Arrow keeps coming back. My biggest problem with them, there's too many of them. I can't keep up. And, like, the CW shows, you have Arrow, Supergirl, DC, Legends of Legends Tomorrow, of Tomorrow and The Flash. And all four of those, you have to watch them all because they all cross over. Well, weren't they having a big crossover event this week? I don't know. I yeah, can't I think keep so. up with them. I think they were having a big crossover event this week where the different characters were going in different shows and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, so I got, and my third comic. Jeez. Th- News. You are a nerd. I know I am a nerd, all right? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Suicide Squad came out. I watched that the other day. Uh, Margot Robbie. Yeah. She plays Harley Quinn. She's going to be back as Harley Quinn in a movie called Gotham City Sirens, which it's going to uh, it's gonna be like female villains, but I think it's going to be, sounds like it's going to be Poison Ivy, well, Harley Quinn, obviously, Poison Ivy, and Catwoman. Interesting. So, who's going to play? I, Margot Robbie will be Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Now, I don't know who the other two. And usually, uh, Batgirl would be the the per, the uh, heroine. Yeah. So, we'll, I don't know if that'll turn out. It was just announced, so there's really not much info on it. Well, since we're in our TV and movie segment right now, did you see Alan Thicke died? I know. That was crazy. Yeah, 69 years old and dropped over dead. Yeah, heart attack. Yeah. They well, said he was playing hockey or something. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah, that just breaks my heart. I loved that. I loved growing it, pains growing up. Well, he seems so down to earth. Like, every time you'd always see him. You'd met him a few times? Or? No, you'd see him. Cam- <laughs> cam- I mean, in the last few years a lot of what he's done is cameos and stuff but he kind of you kind of get the feeling that he was okay with making fun of himself you know yeah that tv dad type yeah role. yeah because uh he was uh, that show this is us that i watched he was actually played a uh, a role on that because one of the guys on the show plays an actor well he was acting on the show that he was oh in. really yeah but uh I I remember one of Growing Pains. You yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, there was a show on Saturday mornings when I was a kid. Alan Thick hosted. It was uh, it was like a trivia contest uh, with like about animals. Really? I don't know. If, huh. I don't know if either one of you remember. No, this. I don't. Was it that was, like the early educational programming that's taken over Saturday I, morning? Yeah, I guess so. But it was like. All I remember is, uh, like, they'd have celebrity uh, contestants. So it would be, like, I know Betty White was one of them. <laughs> She's always on everything. Circle takes a square yeah. with that answer about an ocelot. But but they'd ask questions about animals, and huh. they'd have to get them right. And, I don't remember that. I don't know, money went to charity or something. But, man, I wish I could remember. Yeah. If only there was a I way of he looking he wrote a bunch it. of... Go ahead. Matt. I could look it up, but I, but I forget. I forgot that he was a big uh, theme song composer too for television. Really? Like, did you know that he wrote the he wrote the theme for Different Strokes? Huh? Really? I didn't know that. Wow. Really? Yeah. Huh? And uh, the Facts of Life. He wrote the theme song for that. 
That was another good show. And those are two yeah, big. I mean, I could recite the lyrics of both of those <laughs> right now. I, I could I do mean, the facts of life, and that uh, yeah, the facts of life. Take the good, take the bad, take yeah. both. There you have. Yeah, I knew I could. Yeah, bait you into it. Animal Crack Ups was the show that I was thinking of. Huh. It was a series between '87 and 1990. I don't remember that at all. So yeah, Saturday mornings. Did you pull that from his IMDb? Yeah. What else? Anything else of interest on there that he had? I wonder if they will list the theme songs that he did. Um. <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, I was surprised to hear that he died. Yeah, I was too. I heard his last appearance was on that new Netflix show, Fuller House, the Full House spinoff. Oh, was really? It? Really? I yeah, guess... that that just seems like the perfect role for him. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he was on. Uh... Oh, yeah, Fuller House. I guess he – I wonder if he was – because the second season of that just came out. Yeah, yeah. Have you watched any of that show at I, all? I've no. watched the first season, yeah. It's it's oh, really – watch the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're braver than I am. I made it through about three episodes. So it's basically uh, – the whole thing is a love letter to the, to the old show. Sure, you know? sure. It is its own thing, though. Have you watched G the Gilmore Girls? No, I haven't watched that. No, I'm assuming that's the same way. That you know, an homage to the original series. Yeah, but they don't have Stephanie Tanner's boobs. <laughs> man, that's what two or three times we've mentioned boobs already in this episode. That was all you, man. I know. Well, I'm, that, that's, yeah, I'm looking through what Alan. I'm looking through Alan Thicke's IMDb, and it's. There is basically a bunch of one-offs. He he didn't huh. really he didn't really have any reoccurring roles. Okay, how how I met your mother, Mr. Sherbowski? Was oh, that, that was Robin's, Robin's dad? dad. That's about the last uh, big role he's had. It looks like, and that was only like looks like six episodes. Huh. So really, he it was Facts of Life, and that was it. Or not facts of life. Growing pains. Growing pains. Oh, Bold and the Beautiful. No, that's only seven well, what, Didn't one of the big soap operas lose an uh, actor this week, too? He some uh, Another one died. Stefano, Stefano Demira died. Yeah, what was from he? From Days of Our Lives. Okay. Did, uh, oh, that was my favorite show in college. My friends and I would always <laughs> schedule our classes around Days Oh, wait a minute. Lives. You just... <laughs> You just said, oh, you got through Fuller House, and now you're talking about <laughs> the days of our lives. Oh, we loved watching. <laughs> oh, it was so much fun. We had drinking games about it. <laughs> <laughs> what did the drinking games involve? When did you drink? What were, the, what were the items that made you drink? I don't even remember. I think it was just the show would start, and we'd start <laughs> drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes any show better, I guess. Yeah, it it was it was the best. I was so sad to see him go. He was so he had the really thick Eastern European accent that I couldn't quite place. It was either Baltic or Italian or something. Huh. And he was such a ham. He was so much fun to watch. <laughs> wow, I would have never guessed that, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't think I've watched one episode. So. Oh, it's never too late to get started. You'll catch up pretty quick. <laughs> jo Joseph Mescola? Mescolo? That's his name? No. Nope. Is that, oh, is that Stefano? That's, I only know him by Stefano. Stefano Demera. On the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah Stefano Demera. <laughs> and then he'd get mad. The actor would get mad, and he'd leave Days of Our Lives. And he'd show up on, like, The Bold and the Beautiful or The Young and the Restless for two or three days. Really? And then, yeah, and then Days of Our Lives would come crawling back and say, oh, we miss you, Stefano. We miss your goatee and your thick Baltic accent. And he'd come, he'd come back like he was never gone. That's funny. Man. So, uh, what a, well, what? I guess we'd You're finish up me. TV. Did you watch any of the White Rabbit project? I did. Jackson and I, uh, we'll talk about this in a little bit. We went to Branson this past weekend, but I used, I successfully used the new Netflix feature of downloading episodes to a mobile device so we didn't have to have the internet. Oh. 
and we watched probably four or five episodes of White Rabbit Project while we were out of town, and we've been watching it since we've been home. I, it's not Mythbusters. No. And that's no. okay. Um, I like seeing Grant, Tori, and um, Carrie back together. I think the theme of the show has some growing to do. There's just something I can't put my finger on that isn't appealing to me. I like the show, but it could be better. I'm not sure what that better is or what they'll have to do to get better, but there's just something about it. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Have you watched it? Well, uh, yeah, I I watched, I've seen two episodes. Um, I, the, the first one was about superheroes, so, you know, yeah. obviously <clears throat> up my alley. Yeah. But it... I guess that's the theme in everything. They have, like, uh, they try six different, like, uh, they yeah. have a topic, and then they try to rate six different things. Right. Which would be the best, which would be the worst. Yeah. And I, I it's, it, like you said, it's not Mythbusters. And it, I don't think it was meant to be Mythbusters. It's the same producers, obviously the same people. Uh, you know the three um they're just missing something there there's just something there well i've noticed like a couple of them they're really not they're just reading like some story like right. they're saying oh this happened and there's kind of a dramatization of this story that they're telling like uh one was another one i saw was about prison breaks yeah i don't think i've seen that one yet that really that was the second one no i don't know Maybe Jackson watched it without me. You don't really have to watch them in order. Yeah. But uh, it was kind of the same. They would tell, like, a story about what happened. And some of them are really interesting, though. And it was uh, just they didn't have a lot of the building. Right. And But then again, on Mythbusters, it got kind of old that everything was like, oh, let's explode this. Right. You know? No, I agree. I, I mean, agree. It's fun to an extent, but it gets a little old after a while. I, I like the fact, the one episode that I really enjoyed was, um, so it had something to do with G-Force and the most intense thing to do. And they did, like, riding in a Blue Angel, riding in a, a U.S. Olympic bobsled, uh, a roller coaster, uh, a Formula, Formula race car at the Indy 500, couple different things. And they, I mean, it was extremely scientific. They had the accelerometers and all that stuff on them, and they were measuring, measuring G-forces that were inflicted on them. And it was very interesting to see each one of those tasks and how long a certain level of Gs were tolerated during that task. Like the, I had no idea that the bobsled was as intense with G-forces as it is for the period of time that it is. It, it's, hmm. it's pretty wild. Wow. Um, and it was just funny to see Tori try and train with those guys and and go down the bobsled out in out in oh. Salt Lake City. It was it was pretty funny, um, but no, it, it's definitely a show. Jackson enjoys it. He's watched every episode so far. I think um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see if it gets picked up for a season two. I'm sure it will. It probably will. It probably will. Uh, Mike, are you a fan of the the uh, MythBusters, or have you seen this new show? I haven't seen the new show. I've heard you guys talk about it every week. Um, it seems like something Josh is really going to be into, but no, I've never actually uh, sat down and watched an episode. Oh, I've probably just started up. Yeah, I've probably seen every episode of MythBusters. I really, really, really enjoyed that show, um, and I'm just happy to see something continuing on. I know Discovery's got that new show coming out called "Help Us Find the Next MythBuster," and they're interviewing. Um, people to try and be the next set of MythBusters, and you know they're talking to people everywhere from physicists down to rocket scientists and everywhere here in between. Um, that to me, that seems a little bit more gimmicky. Um, I'm not holding out much hope for that show. Well, my, have you thought about trying out? No, no, not at all. You can't no, build anything. Okay. No, I, I'm uh, no, I'm not a big builder. I'll blow stuff up if you want. Come up with ideas, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You but, become, you'd be you'd be the best idea man for things to blow up. The thing is though, you have to I have to be drinking first. Yeah. You, you got to have That's, at least two or three <laughs> drinks in before the idea is really like flow days free. of your days of our lives. <laughs> days of your lives. <laughs> days of your lives. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, it really gets enjoyable after the third drink. 
Um, no, it'll it'll be interesting. Mike, what's your go-to show on Netflix right now? Uh, you know, I haven't been watching anything on Netflix. I just I just finished up Westworld. Oh, did you? Um, and I, got, I, can, I haven't yeah. watched the finale yet, but I've heard the finale is oh, pretty it'll wild. Blow your mind. Uh, I just haven't had time. Um, but I could, what's that? I just said I just haven't had time to watch it yet. Oh, it's totally worth it. Um, but I can only watch one TV show at a time, or else I start getting confused. Like the plots <laughs> will start twisting together in my head. <laughs> So I, I tried watching Downton Abbey and Game of Thrones at the same time, <laughs> and it felt like <laughs> it felt like the Crowleys were kind of like the the Seventh Kingdom that was just off on their own little island, just kind of that didn't have at each other. That didn't have any nudity yeah. or anything or any dragons with it. Like, wait a minute, no, no nudity, just a lot of missing pen knives. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they they both kind of uh, they're hard, you know you. To me, they're both shows you got to have the subtitles on to understand anything. Yeah, true, <laughs> true. <laughs> Maybe uh, that's have just either me. you watched that show? It's called... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. no, no yeah, you're go fine. Ahead. Oh, I said, have either of you watched any of episodes of that show called 3% on Netflix? No. No, I heard it about that. It keeps popping up for me. I, I don't know anything about it. I just know that it's... It, I guess it originally came from Portugal... I'm about ready to cancel so, our and Netflix then, So you have the option to watch it in Portuguese or English, and I can never decide if I want to do the subtitles and have to pay attention the whole time, or if I want to do it in English and have it dubbed and have it have it be off kind of a couple seconds. I can be watching you on your live stream right now. Yeah. Yeah. In a future where the elite inhabit an island paradise far from a crowded slums, you get one chance to join the three percent saved by or saved from squalor. squalor. Interesting. Yeah, watch, <laughs> watch in English or Portuguese. Okay, that's pretty. That's <laughs> yeah, pretty different. Yeah, and uh, someone may see this and go, "Ah, oh, that's only got a three percent rating." I don't want to watch that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, man, they should, yeah, they should have went but for like ninety ninety seven. Yeah, went you're the gonna be stuck around. in the ninety seventh percent. Yeah, Mike, did you hear that uh, Amazon Prime they're rolling? Prime Video out of their Prime membership, and they'll you can subscribe to it for three dollars a month now. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that was the big news today from Amazon that they're they're going to roll Prime out to its own or Prime Video out into its own membership fee. The introductory rate for for six months will be three dollars a month, and then after that six month period, it goes up to uh, six dollars a month. Oh, okay. But that kind of beats. So if I have Amp. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. What were you saying? Um, I was going to say, so if I have Prime, all, Prime already, will I be able to keep watching the videos, know, or will I have to start just paying extra? It didn't say that in the article. I would have to believe, if you have Prime already, that it would that they're going to keep Prime Video in there. That, But that's just me. I don't know that for a fact. It would, to me, it would be okay. really stupid to roll that out and make you subscribe to something else. Yeah, I think that's the way yeah, it is. <clears throat> it'd have to be. Well, it's time for a beer. Is that why you're handing me oh, a yeah. beer? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Why don't we... Sorry, Mike. Uh, if you have a beer at home, Mike doesn't pop it open. Mike doesn't drink anymore. Okay, well... I'll pour myself a glass of water. There you go. Something about done? days of our lives. Yeah. And, yeah. So, <laughs> while, so while we're enjoying this beer, Mike, why don't we... Uh, let's let's. You have, do you have any get-to-know music? Getting to know you. It sounds like you just made the music All right, right there. Sounds good. So... so uh, Mike, you're you're a curler, right? I am. I'm in a curling league here in Santa Fe. Which to me it sounds just counterintuitive because, you know, Santa Fe being the the rather warm climate that it is, that there's a curling league in Santa Fe. Yeah. No, that, I totally get that. It's, oh, go ahead, what were you saying? No. I that seems more of a Canadian thing, you know? Well, or at least it is north of some freezing uh, but, point. <laughs> but with all the with all the pretty good weather we have, we actually have enough Canadian transplants that down here. No kidding. That we no kidding, yeah. And then we are a mountain town, so it we're at the southern tip of the Rocky Mountains. Right. And so um, I don't know. Maybe it works. We we do get quite a bit of snow. Yeah, I've seen pictures you've posted on Facebook where it's snowed in town. Yeah, <clears throat> but with all the 
but yeah, between the between the mountainy, snowy stuff, and all the Canadian transplants, we have enough for probably twenty twenty five curlers here in town. Wow! So, how's your team? Yeah. Um, we play on the same ice that people skate on, so it's really bumpy. Oh, so yeah. the quality of play is really low. I think I've been playing for like six months now, and I think I'm probably one of the one of the best in the league. Oh, really? So uh, you got yeah, you need uh, really hard uh, brooms, right, to make it smoother or whatever. Isn't that what you do? Yeah, you have you have you have the brooms to speed it up. So if someone pushes it too slow. You can you sweep in front of it really really hard, and uh, that might make the stone go an extra like five, ten, fifteen feet. Wow! There's lots of yelling yeah. and curling, right? There is. I uh, I've been thinking about starting my own podcast, but I have to scream so loud so my team can hear me <laughs> that like I lose my voice. Do you really? Wow! I do. So so what's the curling season? How long how long does that go? Um, for us, it's year round. Oh, okay. I think that um, different places, different places do different season lengths. Um, but for us, it's just kind of like, yeah, you you sign up. It goes, I think, sixteen, twenty weeks, something like that, and then wow. we go to the next one. Yeah, that's pretty um, cool. Yeah, and then the different curling clubs around the country have something called Bonspiels. It's a curling tournament where uh, people will all fly in, and then they'll all curl for a couple of days. Oh wow! And I actually, yeah, and I actually went to one in uh, Phoenix last month. Cool. Yeah, and we got destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> we played against uh, we played against this group of women, and they beat us probably like fifteen to one or something oh, like man. that. Oh man! And I was I was kind of grousing about it later, and I looked it up. I was like looking up the USA curling website because I was like, I'm never going to make the Olympics now. Yeah. <laughs> So I was just like looking up. <laughs> I was looking at their website, and one of them was on the Olympic team. Oh, so we geez. lost to an Olympian. Oh, yeah. Well, well, you could <laughs> say, yeah, you, you played an Olymp. Yeah, yeah, you played an Olympian. We got, we got, we got a point on an Olympian. It was, so, a, yeah, and it just yeah. happened to be a woman. But yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> for curling, is there a men's versus women's league where they play each other? You mean, um, or I mean, is there? Because there's a, a men team. I think in the Olympics. I think in the Olympics you can do, you have men's and women's, but here in Santa Fe, since there are only like twenty people, it's kind of take what you can get. Well, sure, yeah, yeah I could see that. Yeah, and it's not like basketball or something where one gender would have a big competitive advantage over the other. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. There's, I wouldn't think there's much of an advantage. Yeah, it's, it's just ice. It's kind of like, like if you're if you're playing like ping pong or or uh, yeah. Or what else? Billiards. Billiards or bowling, you know. What what advantage? Eh, yeah. I guess. It's all this. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I must say this beer is very good. So this is, um, we're drinking, it says J-Dubs Brewing Company out of Sarasota, Florida. This is Bell Cow Milk. Bell Cow Milk Chocolate Porter. It's it's really good. It's very delicious. But I do have a snack to go with that, so I gotta play theme music here. Okay. Your favorite. Yeah. Oh, in the volume. Yeah, below. Mike, you may not hear this. I'm not here. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a, that's the nice thing when you're on the phone on on remote. You don't you don't get to hear the music. Oh come on! But I like the song. It's such a great song. It's all who, who sings oh, it? Shit. That is the scam. It's a St. Louis scam? band. The scam. Okay. Um. So today we have, in keeping with the healthy foods, uh, we have white peppermint Twinkies, which is a limited edition for uh, I guess for the Christmas season. It looks like a <laughs> yep, nice and healthy. It probably says no preservatives on it, right? Um, you didn't get the no preservative kind. It doesn't say. It doesn't oh, even. It great. just says limited edition. Dang it! And they got oh, a little. Oh, that's making my mouth water. Yeah, that it, looks so good. Yeah, they got uh, sparkly here. Yeah. Well, that that does nothing to tell you what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the wrapper. <laughs> Well, here, uh, take it out and just rub it on the microphone. You might be able to get it. 
It's like a Twinkie covered in white white chocolate with white chocolate with peppermint with flakes, I guess. I guess. Mike, there was something else. Oh, yeah, Mike's kind of famous. Did you know that? You're famous? Oh, I want to talk about Twinkies first. I want to talk about Twinkies first. You, you, I, want to, I want you guys to eat these and let me know how they are. Greg's I'm eating it right now. Living like... Yeah. Well, I lived in Albuquerque. I lived in Albuquerque for a while. And do you remember when Twinkies went under, when Hostess was just like, we're not selling them anymore? We're yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there were... <laughs> this, is just, this is the most Albuquerque thing ever. But people would go and buy them up. They'd go to, like, the Walmart or the Smiths or whatever and just buy everything up. And then they'd sell them out of the back of their truck. <laughs> That's awesome, oh, man. Well, I know I... <laughs> I thought we'll never see hostess. We'll never see hostess again. So we better. I got like a thing of donuts or something. That was it. And uh, I I threw them out probably about uh, about a month or two ago. <laughs> so they've been in there for about three years. I'm like, what am I gonna do with these? I'm sure they're worth thousands of dollars. Money. Yeah, you can put them on eBay. They never go bad, do they? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. These are, to me, these are really good. They're pretty good. They just they have a very subtle peppermint flavor to them, and I'm not a big peppermint fl- fan, and it didn't it didn't turn me off. So no, they're they're decent. Not a turn off. Not a turn off. <laughs> yeah. So Mike, Mike, I'm heading to the go I'm ahead. heading to the grocery store after this. Should I pick some up? Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're vegetarian. You're ve- you're still vegetarian, right? I'm still a vegetarian. Yeah, you should be able to eat. What? Well, uh, they have cream in them, I guess, right? Can you do? Cream? Oh, that's okay. I could eat. I, I'll, I'll eat. I'll eat the cream. Okay. I'll, if, if it's delicious, I'll make an exception. If, if you like peppermint and Twinkies and white chocolate, you'll eat the whole box in a sitting. The ingredients. Okay, yeah, and those are like those are my three favorite things. Well, the ingredients list is very very long. <laughs> So <laughs> it is too, but it's probably all chemical. So buyer beware. <laughs> partially produced right, with genetic. Partially produced with genetic engineering. Wow. Okay. Only partially. <laughs> yeah. Only partial. That's a good point, Mike. Yeah, the only partial. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I Interesting. I That's kind that of an is. odd disclaimer, yeah. but okay. Yeah. So uh, Mike has been on the on the. Small screen, right, Mike? You haven't been on the silver screen yet, right? Um, I don't know. I think I've been in some things that might have been on the silver screen, but yeah, I'm mostly a TV guy. Give us your. Uh, give us your. Are you yeah. on IMDb? Do you have an entry? No, I'm not on. I, I'm not on IMDb. Um, so one of these days, that's kind of the ultimate goal around here. Um, oh, really? Just kind of in yeah, that area. Yeah, everyone wants to get. Because if you get on, if you get a speaking role, that's how you get on IMDb. Interesting. Okay. And if you and if and if you get a speaking role, that means you get uh, screeners, so you get to vote in like the SAG awards. Yep. Yep. Oh wow, Greg. Yeah, we used to screen movies. Remember? Yeah, until we you did. until you pissed those people off. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was about three years or so. Yeah. You say we, but you went to probably about I ten movies until I no, I went to more than ten damn yeah. movies. I saw Harry Potter. I saw. I, I went to more than ten movies. Well, it was, it and you was, act like it was a punishment. You enjoyed going. It well, okay. Every every I week, I went to all the damn Chipmunk movies. Well, that was fine. I didn't want to go to those. So about every, either once or twice a week. But it'd be in the middle of the week, like yeah, on a Wednesday, right. Tuesday. That that part did suck. And and then if it was a super big. Showing it was down and it was over in Chesterfield, which is you know an hour away. It's a good theater, but it's far away. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it was nice to see all those movies. But during like January, where all the stinkers come out, yeah, you're like, uh, yeah. What movie was it that you pissed him off and we didn't get invited back, or you didn't get invited <laughs> back? So uh, the Seth Rogen movie Neighbors. Yeah, um, it wasn't. <laughs> I didn't piss them off. Okay, so he, so I had to turn in like a review every week because I was putting uh-huh. it on our blog, filmbacon.com. You can still see the stuff we have there. Well, we, um, so I went and saw Neighbors, and after the show, you usually talk to one of the, the guys who run it and say, oh, I liked it, or they, and they write it down in their little notebook, and, uh, he emailed me. He said, 
I didn't get your I didn't get your review and I said oh I stopped you I thought I told you I liked it and I said and here's here's where my blog entry is or whatever ever since I said I don't know if I pissed him off because I said I I told you what I thought <laughs> or what because after that movie I never got another invite which okay so we have to tell a little bit of the story of how we started getting invites we kind of conned our way we, in. We did. We conned our way in in a big <laughs> way. Because we how I'm how did imp- we we were we were getting well public invites. Yeah, we found out that uh, a bunch of blogs and radio stations they all get free tickets to movies screeners to the screeners. Yeah, to the yeah to the uh, pre screenings right. or whatever. And um, basically, they go through this site called GoFobo. So you can find go. Wow, I forgot all about that. You can find GoFobo car, uh, codes to get free tickets, and we were we were getting pretty good where we were yeah. able to get almost anything we wanted. Anything we wanted, because we started around May or something. Yeah, and we were like the summer movies and all that. We started getting all these. I think the funny thing was it was like Green Lantern that came out. Yeah, it was a big movie yeah. at the time, but Kung Fu Panda Two. Yeah. yeah. Horrible bosses. Horrible bosses, yep. But 50-50. So we're like, how do we get... We found out what company it was Oh, that ran it by finding a ad on S- Slew's website. Yeah, it was Slew's, yeah. And I don't I don't remember how we found that. It was you were we were just googling around. Yeah. Yeah, that was We found that and then we talked to one of the people who ran that and we were like, "Well, we we review movies on our site, and we had just made our <laughs> like site a like week that before yeah, that morning or something. <laughs> yeah, we were we were like <laughs> going in work. We were going. So, what do you think about this name and this name? Like, ah, oh, that's already taken. We yeah. came up with film bacon. Yeah, or something. and uh, so we gave we fed him a line of bullshit that we had all these hits on our page. Well, <laughs> in reality, my my one of my websites halfassproductions.com it does pretty well i get a lot of hits a lot of it is because especially around this time of year uh because i have this christmas article about rudolph and people find it funny or whatever it's about the misfit toys and i get tons of hits on it and so i like compared i said this is our sister site we're opening this new site yeah so we're gonna all the people who go to the half-ass productions are gonna start going here. Yeah, we which we fed them Alexa data and everything, which doesn't happen, you yeah. know. Um, so we we said we were able to look up Alexa data from one of the other websites that was getting in to yeah, these screenings. That's right. We're I like, forgot about have, that. We have better. Yeah, uh, track record than that. More viewers. We we compared like three or four other, four other review sites yeah. in St. Louis. Yeah, that's right. And they're like, okay, we'll put you on the list. Yeah, and the next thing we know, we started getting our own email invites. It was awesome. Yeah, and then Greg had to go piss that's him off. That's amazing. Yeah, that lasted for a while. It, was, it literally it was three years. Yeah, it yeah. And uh, I'm just impressed that it all ended because of a good review. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, it was. It would be like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get you that. You started talking smack about the theater popcorn or something. Yeah, no. Out. I I think well, we kept getting uh I kept hearing rumors like, "Oh, they're going to take some of these people off the list and all that." And and it it never really happened with us, so I kind of I never wanted to, <laughs> you know, uh hit the hornet's nest or whatever right. and so I don't know. It was I gotcha. uh it was a good time while it lasted, but like I said, in those uh, those off months where, like, January, February, there's usually yeah. really bad movies, and you're like, ugh. Yeah. You know. The the best thing about it was movies on Wednesday night, because you got... And wasn't it free popcorn? Yeah, free popcorn. Yeah, small popcorn at Warenberg. Where, for uh, medium popcorn. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Man, we saw a ton of movies that way. We saw a ton of movies. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, Hangover 2. That was the first one that... Was it Hangover 2 or Hangover 3? We saw it at the Tivoli. Tivoli. Hangover 2. No, not the Tivoli. Uh, yeah, it was. No, high, point, high, high Point. High Point. High Point. Yeah, we saw it at the High Point. That was the first movie that we screened. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was pretty wild. 
Anyway, Mike, give us give us a couple shows that you've been on. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you a little bit about New Mexico. New Mexico has a really big movie scene here. Um, they offer some really nice tax breaks to places um, in exchange for basically like the the place will get a big tax cut and they'll come film here. So it's kind of break even for the state, but it brings in a lot of pride and things. Sure. And so there's been a lot of really cool movies that have, and TV shows that have shot out here. Like uh, Breaking Bad is the one that everyone knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, but also I know you were talking about the Avengers earlier today. They shot um, the first Avengers out here. Really? Oh, no kidding. And they, Yeah. And I know they shot, uh, I think, I haven't seen the second Thor, but I know the first Thor had some scenes that were here in New Mexico. Huh. Uh, par- parts of Star Wars have been filmed here. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so, yeah, it's just really, it's just a really cool place, and it brings in a lot of people from Hollywood. And uh, they like it, too, because no one's union here, and so they don't have to pay people quite as much. Oh, interesting. But, uh, huh. Um, but in LA, it's really competitive out in Hollywood. Um, I know that, you know, you can, you can try and try and try to get in the background of something and it might just not happen for years. Right. But here it's a, here they're begging for people. I'm probably getting, there's a, there are a couple of shows right now that are uh, sending me six or seven emails a day asking me to come on. So I'm Holy kind of them wow. On. Yeah. So what happened? Do you just like, you get on a list and then they're they're always calling you back for different things is that how it works or yeah i went to a casting call this weekend where they took our picture oh really and uh gave it gave it to every casting agency in town huh so any anything that might be filming here uh yeah they'll 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 let me know and you don't get anything big i mean for what i'm doing right now right like i'm gonna be the guy who uh like if the lead actors are, you know, sipping a cup of coffee in the foreground, I might be the guy driving the car in the background. Right. Yeah. And that's what happened on Breaking Bad, right? You were the car going through the No, Better Call Saul. You were the yeah, you were yeah, the driver. Better Call Saul. Yeah. And yeah, I was I was uh, one of the people that gave his ticket to Mike at his little ticket booth there in season yeah. one. No spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. So uh but you've you've done pretty many of those, and you're, uh, I mean, you're just yeah, done, you're just waiting for a speaking role, huh? I'm just waiting for I'm waiting for a speaking role. Once you get the speaking role, then you're in for life. But I've heard you have to take an acting class for that. Really? I'm too lazy to do an acting uh, class. Acting yeah. Class. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm method. I'm I'm usually the guy in the background just sipping coffee. Your your method. <laughs> <laughs> method. <laughs> So what? What's the rate? What's the daily rate for that? Do you like go and spend the entire day waiting? You know, sitting in the background, or is it? You know, they give you a window of time, or how does that work? So I was in one. I'm doing one that's coming out next year, and it was. I spent a day on set. It has uh, Gary Oldman's going to be in it. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, and I'm. Uh, so there, there were anytime they have them on set the big actors, then, you know, you show up at, I think I showed up at six in the morning for that. Jeez. And then they feed you. And when the famous people are on set, the food's really good. <laughs> you always want to be in a scene with the famous people. That's when they get the good caterers. <laughs> and then the, uh, like the lighting guys go and do their work and the big actors go to, go to their rooms. And, uh, yeah, then the extras just kind of hang out. And uh, we play cards, and then after a while, every they come in and they'll tell us to go to makeup, and we go put on makeup. Huh? Um, or and then we'll go to get put on costumes. So that like if they you know if the lead character is wearing a certain color, they want the guys in the background wearing a different color. Yeah. So they stand out a little more. Right. Um, and then you go back and sit down and play cards more, <laughs> and then. If you're lucky, you film right away and you're done soon. If not, you just sit around and play cards through lunch. Jeez. So and a lot I of just hanging out. Was on... I'm sorry. What's I that? said a lot of a lot of just hanging out, sounds like. A lot of hanging out. So that one I was in, uh, where I was in the background, I played a scientist. And I'm just running away from the camera. Like an alarm goes off and I start running. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, a method... But no, it's uh, <laughs> but no. I, I think I was, 
I was probably on set for 45 minutes, and I sat around. I got paid for 13 hours worth of work. Jeez. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I got two really good meals out of it. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So they pay, I guess, do they have to pay minimum wage for that, or how does that work? You know, I've heard in Hollywood they pay more than minimum, but for us it's, yeah, for us it's, if you're lucky, it's a little over minimum wage. Huh. But, uh, but for the most time. For the most part, it's minimum. If you get like a close up, if they do a close up of your face, I think you might get paid a little extra. Interesting. So you're not in it for yeah. the money right now. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, I'm in it for the art. <laughs> yeah, the art. Yes, that's why everyone does it. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. The art. So have you, have you been? A, have you met anybody famous while doing this? Um, I I've bumped into some people. I've been on set with people, some famous people, a couple of times. Like, have you seen American Beauty? Yeah. You know the the trash bag kid. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he was in the he was in the Hunger Games later. I was I was in a scene with him. Um, I was in that scene with uh, Gary Oldman, but I didn't recognize him because that's what he does. He just he just kind of like absorbs into a role, so yeah. I didn't even know what he looked like until it was too late. Yeah, you were Commissioner and then Gordon. You bump into, <laughs> yeah, <what's that? laughs> I said you were Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but then, yeah, you just kind of bump into famous people around town sometimes. Like, I ran into uh, Brian Cranston and Bob Odenkirk and Aaron Paul at baseball games. Um, I was I was in line at the DMV behind Mal Kilmer once. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Didn't, wasn't there a so story those, recently? I mean, so that, that's the kind of, that, to me, that's more fun. It's just kind of like, you know, you're out at a restaurant and you look up and you see Robert Downey Jr. or something. Sure, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't there a story lately about Val Kilmer, like his health or something? He yeah, have... he's he's a. Pe- I've heard he's got some uh, health problems. I feel bad for him. I'm worried about him. Yeah, I've I've heard that. He, he says there's not a problem, but right. We'll, we'll yeah, see. I don't know. Yeah, wishing him the best. Interesting. So what else we got? He put a he put a giant tumbleweed for sale. Really? Have you seen that? No. No. Yeah, he has it. He got a tumbleweed out here, and he dipped it in gold, and he's trying to sell it at, a, at an art gallery for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Jeez. That's kind of strange. <laughs> what else? What time is it? How close are we? Uh, we only have a few minutes left. Oh, wow. We didn't get we've, to talk about uh, much. Yeah, we've really... Uh, oh, you guys didn't even talk about Star Wars yet. No, oh, Star that, Wars comes out this week. We might as well get to that. Yeah. We, uh, well, this probably won't get uploaded for three weeks, so... Oh, shush. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, you going to see Star Wars this I, week? I'm going to try and go see it at some point this week, yes. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see it tomorrow night, if all goes as planned. I'm pretty excited about it, but I'm one of those that if I'm going to see a movie, um, if I know I'm going to see a movie, I will avoid all trailers because I want to go in as fresh as I can be. Because in Star Wars, I'm going to see, you know. Yeah. I've heard early reviews are, you know, the other day we were talking, and early reviews that came out a couple days ago. We're all stellar, wonderful movie, great movie, epic, blah, 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 blah. Today I've read some reviews that it's more 50-50, that some people say it's, uh, somebody said it was a lobotomized Star Wars movie. Um, yeah, there's it's been getting some kind of bad reviews recently. So looks like 84% <laughs> on Rotten wow, Tomatoes. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. What um, did um, Force Awakens get? Uh, let me see. Uh but I mean, for me, I'm I don't always agree with Rotten Tomatoes. But if they have something as a really high number, I'm probably gonna agree with them. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's one thing to agree with a critic versus regular people on Rotten Tomatoes, you know? Right. Okay. Force Awakens. I only get my film reviews from Film Bacon. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you probably haven't there's seen some or stale, a Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's some stale data out I there, like, Mike. Life kind of stopped. Like, pop culture kind of stopped for me right at Neighbors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Funny how that happens. I think I threw up a Guardians of the Galaxy review. And, uh, okay. And, like, I, I'm like, oh, I'll just go to the movies that I want to see. 
Okay, well, that didn't last yeah, very like long. Three movies in the yeah. last two years. Yeah. Uh, Force Awakens had a 92, which huh. is interesting. an amazing score on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, is that a critic? Is that the critic score? Or is that yeah, the that's a critic people? score. That's interesting. Wow. The audience score is 89. Huh. So, Rogue One, though, I mean, it, it's Star Wars. Yeah. And it's it's a... how to, How is this? It's a prequel to Episode 3, right? Well, But it's an offshoot storyline. Yeah, I wouldn't even say it's a prequel. It's more of a happening at the same time as... Well, slightly as before, the, though, right? Because that's how, how that's how the Rebels come up with the plans for the Death Star. And they have those in Episode 3. At the, okay, so at the very beginning... Yeah, that's what Leia... Right. At the very beginning, Leia's... Given R2-D2 to go find well, Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Okay, yeah. You're our only a, hope. That's the message, and then... He, okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it is slightly before 3. Yeah. And it's not... Or, I'm sorry, slightly before 4. Correct. Yeah, sorry, that was a total misspeak. A new hope. Yep, a new hope. Yep, you're right. Well, Mike, thanks for uh, putting up with us for an hour. Yeah. No it's, problem. Thank you. This has been fun. Oh, yeah. It's been fun. Oh. We'll have to have you on another yeah. time, too. Yeah, and I'll invite you on to my podcast after curling season when I get my voice back. Yep. Sounds great. Yeah, and if you have any questions, awesome. you, we had talked about equipment, Mike. If you have any questions, Greg Greg can tell you what he's got here and, and uh, what to look for and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely need to know. All I have now is an iPhone. Like the, the, so that's all I have right now. iPhone's all you have? That's I probably guess, all yeah. you need. So, I was going to say, I guess you could really do it with yeah, an iPhone. Yeah, but I want it to sound good. Well, I mean, we do the live I wanted, video. I want it to sound like stuck in beta. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, this this is a little bit complicated because we have the live feed going and everything else. If you were just straight recording the audio of this, I don't know that it w- you would need quite as complicated a setup. And you could, I mean, you could buy a cheap mixer. If it's going to be you and maybe a guest or if you have... A couple people, you know, depending on mm-hmm. what you have. These mics, I don't think they cost more than 20 bucks. Really? They're and your mix, didn't yeah. you say you got your mixer for like 80 or something on Amazon? Yeah. It was like a, uh, was that a Black, no, it wasn't a Black Friday deal. <clears throat> but that's a six channel mixer he's got. And I'm sure you can buy them smaller if you wanted to. Yeah. So. All right, Mike. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. It's been a fun time. All right. All right see you later. See you later. Okay. All right. So remember, stuck in beta every week at. Uh, oh, let me put the thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you just took it down? I know. I forgot to take the uh, pre-show thing down, but we'll live with that. So uh, every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Central Time, uh, go to YouTube beer th- beer thirty dot beer thirty TV on YouTube, and also go to beer thirty dot TV for. More info on us, and if you search for "stuck in beta" on any of the uh, you podcast podcast, podcast networks, yeah, you'll find us. So Hopefully, that, uh, Josh will be back next week to move the tree over a little bit further and fill his spot at the table. Yep. So that's it. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>